watching Sioux City Scoop. You're watching Sioux City Scoop. You're watching Sioux City Scoop. You're watching Sioux City Scoop. Hello everyone and welcome to our 50th edition of Shoe City Scoop. I'm your host, Mayor Bill Carpenter, and we thought for our 50th edition of Shoe City Scoop, we would uh, bring you out to the brand new Vicente Supermarket, part of the Vicente Supermarket Plaza, I guess I should say, uh, soon to be joined by the Neighborhood Health Center at the corners of Warren Avenue and Pleasant Street. It was uh, just about a year ago. Uh, that we filmed an edition of Shoe City Scoop uh, with Jason Barboza at the original Vicente's Tropical Supermarket on South Main Street. And uh, in that show, uh, we, we spent part of the time talking about what the new Vicente Supermarket would look like when it was built. I think at that time we really, you had just really finalized the paperwork and the financing and we're getting ready to break ground on the project. And, you know, here we are a year later and uh, not only is the store open, Jason, it's spectacular. It's getting rave reviews from everyone who comes in here to shop. So first of all, congratulations on Thank the new you, store. Thank congratulations. You, we appreciate it. And uh, so much as we did a year ago with the original Vicente's, I thought it would be great if we could use Shoe City Scoop to go on a tour with you of the brand new Vicente Supermarket. Absolutely. It's um, our pleasure having you here. We appreciate you inviting us to be on the yeah. 50th anniversary. Uh, so today I'll take you on the tour, show you what this store is about. Uh, similar to our Main Street store, just a, just a little newer uh, with some more extra flair to it. So let's go right well, ahead. I, I think you're being modest. It's a lot newer. It's a lot larger, it's a lot better, and I know you're still going to have your regular following at the original Vicente's. However, uh, everything here is big, clean, new, uh, and, 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 and better. I mean, you've been selling the, the uh, prepared foods for years at Vicente's, uh, but before this tour is over, you're going to have to give me a sample of something from the prepared food department. So, uh, Absolutely. All a little right. bit, like we said, a little bit different from the other one, but you know, a little bit more and we'll show you guys that while we walk around. And I learned about, started eating yucca the first time I visited Cape Verde. For an Irish guy, it's basically potato. It's the yes. Cape Verdean version. version of potato. Now, it doesn't look like it now, nope. but by the time it's peeled and prepared and flavored and served with vegetables, this is, uh, this is the Cape Verdean, I think the Cape Verdean potato staple of, of Cape, Cape Verdean cuisine. And absolutely, and just like potatoes, you can fry it, you can bake it, you can cook it. So it can do everything else a potato can do, but just yeah. the Cape Verdean way. That's right, absolutely, all right. And I've spent time in Cape Verde. There's fresh papaya, there's papaya juice, there's yes. papaya and goat cheese. Yes. Yes. It's hard to have a meal in Fogo that does not somehow include papaya. Absolutely, and just like avocados, you want to find the papaya that depending on your liking. Are you gonna make something today with it or is it gonna be a couple of days? Same deal, if it's a couple of days, you look something that's a little bit harder. If you're gonna use it for today, you look for something that's a little bit more ripened. Now, do any of your customers actually make their own papaya juice from the papaya? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. so because that was one of the things that I love when I'm in Cape Verde in the morning, they have the fresh squeezed papaya yes. juice. They've squeezed yes. it that morning. It's kind of, it's kind of thick. Yes. but it's delicious. Yes, absolutely, yeah. and it's fresh. And it's fresh. Yes. Can't be any fresher, right it, off the tree. They're still fresh, they're still yellow, they're not moldy, and they keep yeah. the freshness to them. I, I actually can see the difference, yes. yes. When you go to other supermarkets and they, and they gas the bananas, when they do ripen, you start to get the black moldiness on them, and that's why over here you don't get the black mold on the bananas. So these are a, these are a better banana than we'll find in the traditional American supermarket. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, and, day. and I can actually see that difference, and so it's interesting though, but when you, when you buy them this way, the non-gassed, their shelf life is going to be much shorter. So you've got to really yes. be able to yes. move the product along and have a demand for it or else it's going to ripen faster than it would have otherwise. Okay, so now we're here at the new uh, fresh seafood department. And I guess, Jason, we talk in terms of things that you're able to do here 
at the new Vicente Super Supermarket as compared to South Main Street, this is a big addition. Uh, absolutely, Bill. This is something that's new for us. But Bill, similar to our produce, it's procured fresh every day. Okay. So we don't buy from big wholesales again. Same strategy, same local grocer who's doing things different from your uh, big national supermarket chain. We go to the pier, as you can see, straight from the pier, yeah. and we procure our fresh, fresh every single day. We go to the pier, we look at them, we make sure they're fresh, we pick them up, we bring them in. And we do that consistently every day, where your wholesaler will buy them in, bring them into a warehouse, and then distribute them. Yeah. So you can really taste the quality and the difference of in our fish versus the others. And I would think like particularly uh, with your Cape Verdean customers and some of your other uh, customers, fresh fish is really important. Because I know when you're in Cape Verde, I mean, fish caught that day at the market in, in the center of town is a big part of the culture. If you're gonna have fish for dinner, it's caught that morning, brought to an open air market somewhere where then people pick out the fish of the day that they're going to then bring home and a couple hours later will be on the table. So I would think that your customers here are looking for the same type of ability to come in and get real fresh fish that they plan to bring home and prepare that day. Absolutely, and especially when they know they can come in and get fresh meat, fresh produce, groceries, and now you have an addition of the seafood department. It makes it a real one-stop shop for our customers, and they yep. love it. A wide, wide uh, variety of fish, everything from grouper to salmon. Uh, red snapper, we know, is hugely popular. Uh, so you've got all the different varieties, mackerel, that uh, all of your customers might be looking for. Yes. Now here we are on North Main Street in Vicente Supermarket. So one of the, you, you've given it a Brockton feel. And one of the ways you've done that is the aisles, they do still have numbers, yeah. so I guess you can still call out spill in aisle four, but we've got Vicente's Boulevard, North Main Street, Champions Way, Marciano Way. I mean, you, you, you've kind of really tried to incorporate uh, Brockton into the store. Uh, of course, and again, it's the local feel, being a local grocer, uh, being from Brockton, Brockton is our home. Just understand that what can we do to make this store still feel at home? And that's, that's what we're about. Our, our, our mission is making you feel at home. So we felt that having names that connected with the Brockton community would make people feel at home and yeah. really understand that yeah. this is your local grocer, your local supermarket, not a national chain where they don't really have that local presence. Um, where our, our service and everything we do is personal. Yeah. Now. We've been looking at some of your specialty lines, the fresh produce, the fresh fish, and some of the things that you carry that are targeted uh, towards some of your audience here in the city of Brockton. But I think it's important for us to let the viewers know this is still a full line, full service supermarket. You find the same things that you were looking for in Shaw's or Stop and Shop. You'll, you'll find them here, uh, including even Fruit Loops. So I mean, there's not a kid in the world that can walk down this aisle without trying to reach out and grab a box of cereal. So all of the, um, you know, all of the, the, just the traditional product lines that any shopper would expect to find in a Shaw's or a Stop and Shop, they're here too. It's just you have additionally other lines and additional lines of, of uh, goods for purchase. Yes, I mean, the ability with a larger store gave, gave us the ability to be a large format supermarket. Mm -hmm. So not only that we're local, we do things as a local grocer, but at the same time, we are a full-line supermarket and we carry all the products that you would find at other supermarkets at comparable or better prices. And that's something that we stick to. And um, so, you know, just like anywhere else, you can come here and find any, anything else that you're looking for, a one-stop shop, not only your international products, but your local, uh, your local um, national um, brands. Yep, so I, I guess what what makes Vicente Supermarket here unique versus all the others, you think about you know, your family's history in the market business, starting with a small store, then going to a bigger store, and now today owning a superstore. Yeah. But in reality, I, I guess what you're saying is, you know, we're still the family corner grocery market, but now today, with the size and the scope to carry full lines and variety and carry all those special things you used to look to us for anyhow, but now with a, a complete full line supermarket with inventories of, of everything you're looking to purchase. Absolutely. We still, we understand where we came from. We understand what got us here, and it's the community, so we will never forget that. So the same um, service 
that we gave at Main Street. And I think that's what it's really about, the same service we give over here on Pleasant Street. So you never lose the feel of a local um, grocer. Just a, it's a bigger store, but the same local feel. Right. So Jason, as we talk about prepared foods available here, we've got to start at the grill because this is what's really unique. I know we see some, yeah. you know, rotisserie chickens or prepared foods and are typically in supermarkets. You don't find something like this in any other supermarket. Tell us exactly what you've got here and what are some of the types of things that are being prepared. Well, th what we have here is just our churrasco grill. What we do here, we grill chicken, we grill steaks. Everything's fresh, just like the products we carry. Everything's made to order. So these are half chickens on the half grill chicken, right now, right huh? On the yeah. Grill. Um, one of our specials, our specialties, churrasco chicken. We also do steaks, steak yep. tips. We also uh, do some uh, some ribs. So anything that's barbecue oriented is what we do over here at the grill section, and it's quite the experience. And so you've got the half. But let's take a look at some of the other things you got going here too. So we got the chicken legs going. We so have the chicken legs. Drumsticks. Going. So now he just threw on chicken and bacon. So that's chicken and bacon that he has going on right now. And you know what's amazing about bacon? Anything wrapped in bacon is good. Awesome. You can wrap anything in bacon, it's good. Yes, it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and as lunchtime picks up, they'll start getting into the steaks, which is made fresh, yeah. fresh to order. Now I know when we visited here recently with the Lieutenant Governor, yes. you had a sample of the steak that you had on the grill that day. And I gotta tell folks, it was melt in your mouth tender, juicy, delicious. So awesome. if you get a chance to come in, you've got to got to try the uh, the steak right off the grill here. Absolutely. And I chicken wrapped in bacon. I may be back for some of that cuz that looks pretty good. It's awesome. I've a couple drumsticks it. on the side with some chicken wrapped in bacon. Awesome. And so those will go on and they'll turn over the open coals just like everything else. Yeah. Let's watch him put it on for a second. Yeah. So there we've got uh, some of the steaks uh, that will be for sale for lunch here today going right onto the grill now. So, so Jason, this is a full line uh, of all types of freshly cooked prepared food, many of the classic Cape Verdean uh, dishes, but also uh, some other dishes of, of wide appeal. Uh, <laughs> French fries, you can't go wrong with French fries. Uh, salmon we talked about a little bit when we were at the, uh, we were at the fresh, uh, fresh food market, fresh fish market, yeah. but cachupa, another a staple of uh, the, the Cape Verdean uh, cuisine. Um, now everyone's cachupa is a little bit different than uh, someone else's. What makes yours so good? Well, it's just uh, it's another home recipe. Everyone has their own recipe, we yeah. have our own. So when it comes to cachupa, we have our special recipe that makes it a little bit different from everyone else's. This is actually the refried um, cachupa. Um, what we have also is the fresh made cachupa. Yep. So we have different, various selection of cachupa. Yeah. I know that uh, when I'm in Cape Verde, yep. I have the same breakfast every morning, fresh juice, cachupa, and eggs. And uh, it's, it's a great way to start the day. It's a, it's a, it's a yeah. breakfast staple. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But lamb, chicken, just give us a little idea of some of the various so items you got here. We have our own special cooked lamb um, in-house recipe. Just mainstream item again, chicken wings, a little bit of everything. Yeah, but you can't wrong. go wrong with chicken wings. Absolutely There's not. no one that doesn't eat fried chicken wings. And then you have your uh, toad asthma, yep. chicken, fried pork. Yep. And then we have our own specialty, which is a mini fried pork. Yep. Which that's, it's more, um, it's a lot tastier yep. than the regular, but that's the original recipe. You, can't, the, you the, can't joke with the original recipe. Yep, so that's the traditional. And this is the, the smaller season right now. This, this stuff here is addictive. It is. Yeah. Sure. Now, and I've heard it called something else besides that too, but I won't yeah, yeah. use that one. <laughs> well, we but this is, that. this is, but this stuff, this stuff is like potato chips. Yeah. Once you start eating it, you yeah. can't stop. No. You can't stop. And yours does have a great, great seasoning, great flavor to I it. Yeah. Appreciate it. Right here, the pastels. You know pastels. Yeah, everyone, pastels with who? Everyone loves the pastel. That's like right. To try one? I'd love to try one. Awesome. And And uh, I'll try a tuna. But the, uh, do you sell more of the tuna than the beef? The tuna seems the to be more popular. The tuna is yeah. the staple. The yeah. beef just gives it another, um, just another selection for someone that yeah. wants to have beef. Something we, a little we, different. We can do a chicken. Yep. So we can do various types of um, a pastel to your liking. Now tell me about these down here, because I've tried these a few times. These are good so too. This is, um, the best way to describe it is like a fish cake, uh, well, a shrimp cake. Yeah. 
a Portuguese style shrimp cake. Yeah. So inside it's filled with shrimp and its own sauce. It's yeah. It has its own specialty uh, sauce to it. Very flavorful. Very good. So this is again where your own recipe comes yeah. into play. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. You talk about yeah. one of your regular staple items that people come in for every day. It's got to be the tuna pastel. Absolutely. Um, this is to die for. This All right. Is, I'm going to try it. Let's go ahead. Now, good a mouthful. Delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Outstanding. We've actually picked these up and brought them over to the mayor's office a couple of times for lunch already. So, when we're real busy at the mayor's office, don't have time to go out. The pastels are something nice and easy. Someone runs over, grabs a bag of them, brings them in. Everybody can grab them and eat them on the go. So. And the, and the great thing about our pastels, just like everything else, it's made fresh every day in house. Mm -hmm. um, and we have our cooks here that specialize in just in making the fresh pasta. So these are prepared right here on the premises, yeah. fresh every day. Yeah, and with the other, um, you know, other big chains, what they do is it's frozen, and we don't do that. Everything's made. The batches are made fresh. The tuna's yeah. are made fresh, and it. Well, you can tell the difference with that tuna filling. That's a fresh tuna. Absolutely, and it's great for catering. It's great for if you're party events. Yeah. You come in, you ask for thirty dollars, twenty dollars worth. We'll make a nice tray. You take it to your um, the event you're having. You're gonna be. You're gonna have the best event. Everyone's gonna ask you, where did you get that? And I'm glad you mentioned the catering because you've actually catered some events in the mayor's office yes. for us. Yes. And and this is the beauty. You can cater everything from kind of a dinner type of setup yes. to a luncheon. Yes. And one of the things I love that you do when you come in, we we started the show with the produce. You can come in and do a, a catered spread that includes a great fresh fruit section. Yes. Uh, so you can put that with the freshly prepared foods and have the whole thing for uh, any size group, from a small corporate meeting to a large function, uh, you guys can come in and provide the food. Absolutely, and uh, we're flexible, and uh, if you want to have something that's huge, or it might just be as small as a, a small little birthday party, we can do anything and everything for you. I can tell you, we've had you cater at City Hall a number of times and got nothing but great reviews on the food. So, hey, let's, uh, I, I think before we run out of time, I, I'd like us to take a walk outside the store because a lot of what's exciting for me as the mayor is not just what's happening inside the store here, but it's the positive impact you've had on the neighborhood and in the entire downtown. So before we wrap things up, let's take a quick look outside. Great municipal golf course. Come over and check out DW Field Golf Course. Uh, here in the city of Brockton, we've made a major investment in the in the DW Field Golf Course this year. The playing conditions are spectacular. It's an 18-hole public course. We are serving beer and wine now. We're able to handle tournaments there now. Uh, so come on over and uh, check out DW Field Golf Course. In Brockton, we swing for the fences so we can touch home. We coach in Brockton to instill the teamwork that builds a great winning tradition. We do business in Brockton because here you can find a taste of home away from home. We keep our company in Brockton because we love this city. When Brockton is home, everything is within reach. But Jason, we've spent most of the show obviously featuring the, the beautiful market inside and, and it is a great place for, for Brockton families to come shop. But I think that it's important for people to really recognize outside what the impact of your development of this property has meant for the neighborhood, has meant for downtown Brockton. This is a site that people will recognize that the gateway coming in from Route 27 from the Westgate Mall for more than two decades has been a vacant property. And now, when you come into downtown Brockton from that direction, from the Western Route 27, instead of seeing a vacant, abandoned supermarket, you now see a beautiful, brand new, state-of-the-art superstore, soon to have a neighborhood health center next door. Um, just tell me a little bit about your feelings of, of what it's meant to you and your family to become part of this area, and to become such a big part of this area. I think, um, I think you hit it right on the head. I think. You know, us being from Brockton and us knowing that we had an impact on this city when the city gave so much back to us, it's really a gift back to the community. Um, you know, driving through this area and on this, this site at night and seeing the lights glowing, seeing the area bright, and this, I guess it's the feeling of the energy when you drive by here. You don't get that same feeling that you did two years ago. 
there's a different feeling in this area. There's a different feeling with the, the community that lives in this area. They're already raving and talking to us and appreciate what we've done to this area. And you can already feel the impact that's already had by us coming into this site. So we feel honored. Uh, we feel that it's our way of giving back and um, you know we're in and we're excited. Well and I've got to tell you from the city standpoint we appreciate the investment you've made here. Um, there are so many great stories to tell here. I mean I love telling the story of your family as, as not just an American success story but a Brockton success story yeah. and to show others how uh, an immigrant owned business in the city of Brockton can thrive and grow and do great things for the city and, and do great things for themselves too but that can be successful here uh, and I look at the you know you mentioned the, the partnership we've worked as hard as we can together to make this happen and um, you know the city has invested millions of dollars in the infrastructure around here the the whole new lower end of Pleasant Street that feeds into this area now with new sidewalks and plantings and a new street Street, which makes your property more valuable if you've got that nice street Absolutely. to lead into Absolutely. and and even working with you on on the um, the tax increment financing and being able to provide a tax break that allowed you to put together the millions of dollars of financing that it takes to launch a project like this so you know just like WB Mason I think is a great story for us to tell about downtown Brockton because they're an old Brockton company that chose to stay and reinvest in Brockton well, Vicente Supermarket is another great story for us to tell. Folks who came here to Brockton, built a successful business here, and then reinvested their hard-earned money here to grow and thrive in the city. So um, I think anyone that drives through this north end of the downtown business district now will see what a dramatic improvement this has had already. It'll get even better in the fall with the opening of the Neighborhood Health Center next door. Hopefully you'll be able to continue to develop the plaza yeah. in future years. and. Uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun working with you in this project because it's exciting. And, and we can't wrap it up without mentioning jobs because with all the other things we've talked about, you've created jobs for almost entirely Brockton residents here. Uh, about how many new jobs with this project, Jason? About 40, um, 40 new full-time jobs. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far, probably around 40, 50 part-time jobs. So we're already in the neighborhood of 80 or 90 new jobs, and probably we'll go well over 100 yes. uh, when you're fully operational. So just think about what a difference that makes to a city, a city that's got a lot of hard-working people that are looking for jobs, uh, to, to develop a project like this that, in addition to everything else, creates 100 jobs for our city. And uh, that's why it was a good investment for the city to partner with you in any way we could and, and try to support you here. So uh, I'm sure we're out of uh, time on this 50th edition of Shoe City Scoop. Jace, I want to thank you for the time and thank the tour. You, a you. year ago, we were down on South Main Street talking about yeah. what this new Vicente's supermarket would look like. And here we are a year later, uh, having a chance to walk through and tour and experience. And if you haven't had a chance yet to visit the new Vicente supermarket, here on the corner of Pleasant uh, Street and Warren Avenue. I encourage you, please come down and check it out. If you shop here once, you'll become a customer for life. That's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of Shoe City Scoop. Thanks for joining us. I'm Bill Carpenter. Jason, thanks so much. Likewise. All right. Appreciate it. My name is Daryl Ellison, and I lost my only son, Carl Evan, in a hit-and-run accident. Carl was a joy beyond words. He was fun-loving. He had a great sense of humor. He had a strong work ethic. He went on at 16 years old, got a job at Shaw's Supermarket, and he worked there until the day he died. He was a very giving person. He never had any money. He was always giving his money away. He would pay for homeless people's meals, whatever he felt they needed. On Sunday, September 28th, Carl had just finished his job at Shaw in Brockton, Massachusetts. He had crossed the street to go to the 7-Eleven. He was leaving the store at the corner of Belmont and West Street 
when he was struck and killed at 9.22 p.m. A surveillance camera picked up the vehicle as it was leaving the scene. Police believe the vehicle that hit Carl was a silver or gray minivan. It would have front end damage. There is a $5,000 cash reward for information leading to the apprehension of the person or persons responsible for Carl Evans' death. If you have any information, please call the Massachusetts State Police at 508-923-4205 or the Brockton Police at 508-941-0234. You may also send an email to Justice for Carl at hotmail.com. And to the driver, I believe that you are watching this. This must be a tormenting secret for you to keep. Please turn yourself in. And to those protecting you, please help your loved one do this. Carl Evan was my loved one and he deserves justice. This is my quest. I have faith that you will do the right thing.